Hi guys, welcome back to our Saxon Math. We're doing lesson 105 today in level six. Uh, this is using proportions to solve percent problems. And we're gonna be looking at creating a ratio box to solve some problems. This is a good thing. We've been doing a lot of this lately with ratio boxes. And the reason we practice this so much is because this is something that's really hard to do just using mental math. Some people can figure all this out in their head, but to draw it out and to kind of visualize it can help us decide, solve some of these more complex problems. So that's why we're doing it that way. Now we know a percent can be expressed in, as a fraction. So for example, 30%, that's just gonna be 30 over 100. Um, and it's regarded as a ratio in which 100 is the total number of the group. So if we think of this as a ratio, it's 30 out of 100, okay? Now here we have 30% of cars, so it's 30 over 100, and a parade are antique cars. So 30 is the antique and 100 is the total. If 12 vehicles are antique cars, how many vehicles are in the parade at all? Uh, in all. So we're gonna set up a, a table here. They've done it for us. So we have our percent, 30 out of 100, antiques and not antiques. Now they had to add not antiques because they didn't give a number for that up here, but we know that if we have some are antiques, the rest aren't. Then they told us there are 12 of total that were antiques and we know that our ratio is 30 to 100. So now, just like we did a few lessons ago, we can say, well, this, this is the data that we already know, it's already solved and here's our unknown number. So we're gonna take these, that row and this row and put them together, okay? So we can go ahead and solve for this row, 30 plus what equals 170 but that doesn't really matter because we're not gonna use it to calculate for T here, which is our total. So what we'll do is we'll take our 30 over 100 and our 12 over T, and then we're just gonna put those together. Um, 30 T, we're cross multiplying again, we've practiced this, 30 times T and 12 times 100. So we could just do 1200 divided by 30 uh, and get our answer of 40, but they like to do it this way. So we take our factors, 12 and 100, and by cross multiplying, we get 30T. So we're divided here to get rid of the 30. So it's 12 times 100 divided by 30. So then we look for our common factors. If we divide 10, uh, 30 by 10, we get three. Divide 100 by 10, we get 10. Then we're left with that three. 12 divided by three is four. Three divided by three is one. So now all we have left is the four times 10 over the one. So four times 10 is 40, we get 40. So you can do it that way, or you can just do, you know, 30T equals 1200, and then divide 1200 divided by 30, and that will still just give us um, 40. So it just depends on how you want to solve it, okay? So now in this problem, we didn't need to use the 70% that were not antiques, but in the next one, we will need to use the not. So that's why we set that up in the table. So only 40% of the team played in the game. So we have 40 over 100. If 24 team members did not play, how many did play? So we'll set up our table here. We're constructing our ratio box. We're going to look at played, did not play, and total. And then we'll plug in the numbers that we have. So we've got played, did not play, and total, percent and actual count. They told us we had 40 that played, so out of 100, so we know that those that did not play is 60. And then they told us those that did not play was 24, so we've got that number. So now it's hard because we, we have two unknown numbers here, but again, we have two that are known, so we'll use what is known, uh, this 60 and 24, 60 and 24. And if we're gonna try to solve for P, then we would go with 40 over P. Now we could put it 60 over 100 and 24 over T to solve for T, but right now we're solving for the number of those who actually played. So we'll solve this the same way using our cross multiplying. So 40 times 24, we'll just put that there as 40 times 24 and 60 times P. So now we need to divide these by 60. So we'll divide by 60 and take out our common factors. A common factor here, of 24 and 60 is four. So we'll divide, or six rather. So divide by six, um, that gives us 10. No, we're not doing that first. I guess they did this one first. So divided by 10 is 
uh, 4, 60 divided by 10 is 6. Then they did this side. If we have what's left is 6, we'll divide by 6 to get 1. And 24 divided by 6 is 4. I don't know why they do it that way. It seems really hard and complicated to me. I would just do, again, 60p equals 40 times 24. So we can just do 40 times 24. This is how we've learned to do our long multiplication. And that gives us 760. Now we'll divide that by 60. 60 goes into um, 76 one time. We're left with 16 or 160. That then goes twice. So 120 lives us with 40 or 400. Oh, I messed it up. Why did I mess it up? I guess we want to use cross multiplying. And I don't want to re record this video. So go ahead in the comments, tell me how dumb I am. <laughs> Teachers mess up every once in a while. We can see how that the answer is 16. We got it that way. Tell me in the comments why I messed this one up. Be smarter than this fifth grade teacher today. <laughs> it's one of those days. That's what happens when you're in the middle of COVID-19 and recording all these crazy videos. <laughs> all right, let's try one more example. Buying the shoes on sale, Nathan. Oh, this is a good one. These are the kinds of problems that we do a lot. So he paid 45, 60, which was 60% off. What was the full price? And does he need to know the full price? Probably not, but when you get a really good deal on something, do you want to know how much the original price was? Yeah, so this is kind of cool. So we take our table, we take our 60% and our 40% equals 100%. He paid 45, 60, that was at 60%. So now we're solving to see what he saved and what the total price is. So we're really interested in this F. So we'll take our 60 and 100, 45, 60 over F. All right, that's what we've got here. Multiply them out, F times 60 is 60 F. 45, 60 times 100 is 45, 60. Then they just divided it this time. They didn't do their fract factors. I don't know why, but F equals 76. So $76 was the total price. Pretty groovy. All right, that's it for the day. Sorry that I was dumb today. We have those days, okay? It's all right. All right, you can look at this practice set and get going on your homework. Good luck, have fun with it, bye.